Hi, I'm Timothy Verville, Music Director of the Georgia Symphony Orchestra, and I'm here in my home office to speak a little bit about the GSO Chorus's 360-degree Adaptive Audio Virtual Choir video. Now, since we released this, we've gotten a lot of positive feedback, a lot of great comments. Everybody has really enjoyed it, but we've received two questions about it. The first is, what is the best way to experience this video? And the second is, how did we do it? So we're going to speak about both of those. And the first is how you can best experience this video. Watching the video on a smartphone or a tablet, you want to first make sure that you rotate your phone into the landscape mode. Now, if you try to access it and it opens into a web browser on your smart device or mobile phone, you're going to see a very flat representation. It's not going to be 360 and you can't navigate and pan around within it. You're going to have to use the YouTube app to be able to get the full experience. And included in that is we also recommend using headphones or earbuds because a lot of tablets and smartphones, they have mono sound, they have one speaker, and you're not gonna get the full stereo effect because the audio changes as you pan around within the video itself. Now on a desktop or laptop, it's slightly different. You will use a web browser, but you won't try to turn your laptop or your monitor to do that. So after opening the video, you'll notice in the top left corner, there are a series of arrows that you can use using your mouse to click around to navigate throughout the video. The other method is just by taking your mouse and clicking on the video itself and dragging around to look around and pan around the video. Now, as with mobile phones and tablets, we do recommend headphones or earphones as well because some laptops have really small speakers and you won't get the real effect, but maybe you have a desktop with speakers like these and then you'll probably just be fine. Now, for the second question of how did you make this video, I won't get into the small technical aspects of it because it would be long and boring and it's very labor intensive. Instead, I'll kind of give you the 30,000 foot view of how this came together. Now, there are multiple ways of doing this and the way we chose to do it may not be the best, it may not be the worst, it's probably on the scale somewhere in between, but this is what we found worked for us in these circumstances. So we began by creating a backing track, which was music that the choral members could listen to and rehearse with, and that was done by GSO Chorus Director Brian Black, and we just used a piano track. And there are many methods, some people will use full audio and other complicated means, but this worked, it was simple, and, and it was effective. So once we sent this audio file out to the chorus members, they would record themselves and listen in their ear with headphones or earbuds. And if you look in the video, you can see that. That's what they're listening to, which helps all of their performances line up together, even though they're recorded at, at different times. When each chorus member had finished recording their own part, which again was just them singing with no other music that could be heard, uh, those files were all brought here to this computer and the files themselves were split into video and audio. So the audio then was imported into a mixing program where it was cleaned up for hum and buzz and sometimes the tonal characteristics were changed to enhance the sound because we all know sometimes little mics don't create the best sound. And, and then the next step was balancing the sections within themselves of the singers and then balancing the entire chorus itself to make it sound like a chorus. So when that was done, the next step was to then take all those videos and put them into, again here, <laughs> a video editing program. All of the videos were synced up, so that way when the chorus members were singing, it wasn't like this on the screen, but rather like this. The next step was then taking those synced videos and dropping them onto a timeline and finding artistic and creative ways to help engage someone who's watching the video, whether that's through different panning or zooming or other types of effects um, that are included into the video. The audio that was previously mastered was now brought back in and synced up with the video, which then, once those two were together, they were exported as now one new file. That one file then, after some other magic that I won't get into, was then uploaded to YouTube where people have been watching it ever since. So that's an overview of how you can best experience this video and how it was made. But if you still have questions, you can leave them below in the comments. Uh, you can reach out to us on our website, georgiasymphony.org, uh, gsochorus.org, or you can find us on Facebook.